We'll see. All right. If you'd all join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all, and welcome to the Board of Aldermen <coughs> meeting. Up first, we have minutes of the previous meeting, February 7th, 2022. I'll entertain a motion to approve. So moved. Second. Second. We have a motion to approve. It's been seconded. Any corrections, Good. alterations, adjustments to the previous minutes? Hearing and seeing none, would all those in favor please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. We are outside the rail. We have any members of the public who wish to address the board on items not on the agenda? Looks as though we have none. So this will bring us to communications from the mayor. Mayor Lair. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. I do have uh, a couple of things I wanted to talk about tonight. But uh, first off, why don't we, uh, if we could, I'd like to um, turn your attention to the issue on your agenda. And that is a request to remove from the table the nomination of Brian Boudreau for the RRA board and ask for you to take a vote on that tonight. So I'll move. move to untable the nomination. Second. All right, we have a motion that has been seconded to remove from the table the nomination of Brian Boudreau for the RRA board. But all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. And I'll move to circulate the ballot box. Second. All right, we have a motion that's been seconded to circulate the ballot box. So all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, clear effect whenever you are able. Send that around. Mayor Lair. Okay, um, thank you. So uh, second, uh, I wanted to uh, let the board know and everyone at home that uh, uh, as a result of last Thursday's department head meeting here at, uh, right here in this room, uh, we decided, I decided to lift the mask mandate for all city employees um, uh, starting today, as a matter of fact, the 22nd. And that also uh, pertains to the public entering any and all city municipal buildings. Uh, again, effective today. And those buildings would include City Hall, over at the PD, the Rutland Recreation Community Center, Fire, the Godnick over at the Corsell Building, and any DPW buildings. So any of the public entering uh, any one of uh, our city buildings, the mask mandate is lifted. You certainly may wear a mask if you so choose, but it's not a mandate. So I wanna let everybody know that, and the, the numbers continue to improve. So hopefully we're, hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, getting to a better place so that's the second thing and the third thing I wanted to mention tonight was I wanted to give a big shout out to the Rutland City Fire Department uh, as some of you may have seen uh, there was an article in the paper today uh, that um, our personnel uh, and equipment were requested to assist down at Wall in Wallingford uh, with a rescue uh, with a young uh, lady who had driven accidentally into Otter Creek uh, thank goodness the ice was, uh, you know, solid enough to hold that car up and she did exit the car apparently and waited for the rescue people to come and help her. But uh, with our personnel, the training that they, we have provided for them, although these many years and with the new equipment, the ladder truck, they were able to um, provide a, um, a clean rescue. She is uh, um, recuperating, uh, she's gonna be fine. Uh, but that was a really great job by our Rutland City Fire Department. So hats off to them. And I wanted to mention that publicly tonight. So that's what I have for tonight. Thank you, Mayor Lair. Any questions for the mayor before we let him go? Hearing so none. Thank you again. You're welcome. All right. This brings us to additions and deletions to the agenda. Attorney Bloomer. Oh, good. Sorry about the deletion part, but no additions. Well, what a pleasant surprise. <laughs> All right, this brings us to reports and letters from the department heads and officials. Up first, Brennan Duffy, RRA Director, Biop Recommendation. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. So as you saw in your packet, we have a recommendation uh, from the RRA. We've had a, another Biop applicant come forth. Uh, this is Arson Limited Company uh, doing business as Arson Skate Shops and Clothing Store. Um, and this is Bill Strecker, who is the uh, owner of the business. He's here, and uh, I'll let him talk a little bit about his plans. But uh, in short, 
Uh, the RRA has reviewed the application. Uh, he does meet the eligibility requirements, and the RRA's recommendation is for a $5,000 buy-up grant to help this uh, new business grow. Uh, he actually opened up this uh, summer uh, at 150 West Street and is now looking to expand and hire some new full-time personnel. So, Bill, would you like to say a little word? Come on up. Nice. Thank you all for having me. Um, a great opportunity here. Hello, good to see you there. Um, some of the people from our opening, I, I remember. Um, so that the arson skate shops, you know, I'm from Vermont. Um, after living in South Florida for some years, moving back about 12 years ago or so, I got on the committee in Manchester for uh, a skateboard park. I'm a designer by trade, so that wasn't my in my life. It was just the sport I, I, I used since I was a, a youth. Um, and when that park was going to be built, I didn't want another outlet to open up and not have a community resource there, right? So I opened the shop, and since then, our camps and our, our youth engagement has been just uh, really um, growing. So uh, with that being said, after a couple of years and pivoting through COVID and realizing that was um, really a great resource for us, but also for the communities, we, we opened a pop-up shop here in Rutland, hoping to stay. And uh, instantly, the the city was so great, jumped right in with their their Parks and Recs department, and um, and with the city, and we we began programs with their Parks and Recs department. Um, that helped that helped us financially. It also helped us uh, grow to the community and let them know we were here. Um, families began to count on us for things and, and that led to actually some programs with other municipalities, even this pro programs with Rutland here. Um, now the grant is an amazing opportunity uh, for us to expand as we kind of pivot towards sports education um, and and bringing skateboarding to schools and municipalities. It was in the Olympics this, this past year, so the interest is, is, um, is overwhelming when I reach out to schools and municipalities. So we're kind of organizing what is known kind of as a rogue individual sport, but, but really organizing it for the youth. We have these shops that are the hubs for the community and you know the youth, it's, it's, it's a third place for them that's not school or home that they get to uh, come to. Um, and really this grant is gonna help us uh, focus on that education, focus on hiring, um, you know, getting someone in the shop full time and also uh, doing these sales to schools. These, you know, I've, I've developed a gym safe skateboard that now we get to offer uh, programs indoors. So we have two Rutland schools, actually the Rutland Intermediate School and the Allen Street Campus, uh, both doing programs with us. Um, so we've kind of overcome the hurdle of how do we get this sport organized and, and into these organizations, right? So, so that's the purpose of the grant though, is to uh, support that cause um, and to really you know, keep the youth active, keep them around positive environments, uh, motivating each other um, to off their devices maybe a little bit. And, and really, you know, that's, but that's our goal. That's our goal and, and this is gonna be a great push for that. So I just wanted to really you know, um, thank you all for the opportunity to, to consider us and um, we're glad to be part of the Rutland community. And, Glad to be here. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. Motion to suspend the rules. I'll move to suspend the rules. Second. Very much to suspend the rules. It's been seconded. Um, would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. And I'll move for the approval of the 5,000 buy-up grant for Arson Limited uh, doing business as Arson Skate Shop and Clothing <coughs> Store. Second. second. Right. We have a motion. It's been seconded. Any further discussion, debate, questions? Hearing and seeing none, would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you very Thank much. Very much. Thank Congratulations. You. All right, this brings us to Treasurer Markowski, Treasury's report, January 31st, 2022. Treasurer Markowski. He's sitting down there. Hi, everybody. Um, we're at January, so seven months into our fiscal year, which is unbelievable, but. Um, just to hit a few highlights of where we are. So I think January is the period right before our tax collection. So we have a, a pretty uh, good, comfortable cash position in city accounts. In the pooled cash fund, we have 5.7 million. That pooled cash is, that's our one cash account that we use for all city operations, general fund, uh, and the water and sewer funds and parking and transit. Um, so that 5.7 million also includes that ARPA allocation because we're holding the ARPA cash is there, although it's accounted for in a separate fund. Um, delinquencies are, are a problem. They're 
Some of them are very high. We try to work toward resolving those as much as possible. I included tonight when I sent the financial summary a little information on VHFA program for taxpayers. So if you're speaking with anyone, there are programs out there. If a taxpayer has fallen behind, something that they can tap into, we've been trying to help and move as many as we can toward that to, for assistance. So. Um, and if anyone has any questions on it, please call the office. We have information on the website outside the treasurer's office. Um, so I just wanted to get that out there. Um, so then I want to look at pooled cash. The water fund has a uh, $478,000 cash balance. The sewer fund has been lagging. Every month when I report, the sewer fund is, has a negative balance due to the city. This month, it's a million dollars. So that has spent more than it has cash available. So I took some time looking at why, you know, what is happening there. It really is a concern. It's been lagging right along. Right in the sewer fund, we're operating those, the force main project, the digester project. We're wrapping those projects up. So I, wor I worked on that to see, is that in fact what's drawing the sewer fund down? And yes, it is working with the city engineer and just working our numbers together. If we were reimbursed for all of those projects, that sewer fund would have a positive cash position about 250,000. So that's something that's been concerning to me as uh, just watching the numbers. Um, I would also report that on the balance sheet, the um, unassigned fund balance is about 11% just indicating that we should have, if we have a good year, revenues, expenses, we should have some money there to put toward the, toward the new budget to offset that tax rate. Um, looking at departments overall, uh, they are, for the most part, departments stay within that gap where we're looking at 58%. We have a couple of large items. When I look at legislative, that budget's high, but that's where we post um, tax abatement, so that throws that off. Um, government buildings, the expenses in there are high. We had uh, significant expense at the library, so that uh, has that over. Um, DPW reports a little bit higher due to the encumbrances. The recreation is high. Expenses, Georgetti, White's, Community Senator, and the recreation programs are all reporting higher expenses than budget um, for this period. Um, I would also report that on the revenue side, when you're looking at your non-tax revenue, RME is about 67%, recreation is about 73%, and the pilot, which is a large portion of that, is 92%, and that's just a timing. We collect that earlier, so um, those things are out there. Uh, water and sewer fund revenues are about 50%, but you only have two billings in there, so that's pretty normal for this time. Uh, parking fund, I know the parking committee has been monitoring that, uh, and uh, expenses exceeded the revenue by about 24,000 through the end of January. Transit fund expenses are exceeding revenue about 48,000 through November. So that's one to continue to watch, um, especially with the contract coming up there. Um, the RRA has a strong balance sheet uh, with 182,000 in assets, 108,000 <coughs> is in cash, and 75,000 is really assigned for uh, capital projects, business development, grant programs in the RRA. So. And we look at that on the RA board. We look at the financials uh, every month as well. Any questions? I just have one, and maybe it's more for the parking <coughs> committee. We talked about the, the turnaround uh, in the parking meter fund just because of the aggressiveness of the um, personnel downtown. When do we thought, what the chief said he thought he would have better numbers by X do we know what that, we call what that time was going to be was the end of, I don't know if it was the end of the last fiscal year or whether we're looking ahead to the end of this fiscal year, which would be next July. I, I am not sure about yeah. that. I haven't been to the. 
parking meeting, so. Um, so I'll have a committee report that'll address some of that okay. later. Okay, great. Oh, good, so. right. good. <coughs> Other questions, Treasurer Murkowski? Hold them to play. So, Mary, um, recreation revenue at 73%, we still have more than a third of the year left. It, do you project that the revenue, I mean, especially going into the summer months, their programming is really going to go up with a lot yeah. of those fee-driven mm -hmm. um, uh, programs that they have. So um, I, I really wonder if their revenue is going to more than make up for the higher uh, than projected expenses, the higher than budgeted expenses in there. Um, and I, I wonder the same about some of the others. I mean, I've heard that in, in different departments, a lot of the Right, timing are is, up. yeah. The, the timing of some of this, we're, we're looking at it at 12 months and just saying at seven months we're here. Mm -hmm. um, some of that recreation revenue as we get into closer to the end of the year, it's for programs that fall into the next fiscal year. So some of that revenue high now, if we've collected for um, camps and whatever, some of that might roll into the next year. We'll do an adjustment for that. Okay. So, I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. Thank but you. so much of it is timing, so you're right. Um, when you're looking at it, if you were to close today, that's what it is. But so many expenses will flow through those last few months of the year that we don't see right now. Um, and the only other question I had on the, was on the parking fund. Um, expenses are exceeding revenue right now by 24000 and the revenue is only at 48% of the budget as of January 31st? Right, I believe that, and I don't know for sure what the number is, but we budget a deficit in that fund. We yeah. don't anticipate revenues to meet expenses in that fund when we budget, so. Okay, yeah. is there an expectation um, between you and the mayor um, as to with the 13 or so new businesses downtown that we might possibly see an increase in some of the parking revenue down there, hopefully? Well, I would certainly hope there's going to be more bodies down, down, down. I think that that's what we're all working for, yeah. or, uh, you know, working towards. And, um, you know, I can't um, specifically say whether that's happened yet or not. I mean, these are all fledgling openings, and it's the middle of the winter, and, you know, yeah. pedestrian traffic is not what we hope it'll be in the spring or the summer. But um, I think, again, an overall discussion with the parking committee, mm -hmm. figuring out the new contract with the, with the deck, and then figuring out where you know the parking meters and kiosks is mm -hmm. all inter all interplaced with each other. So um, you know, obviously that's the ideal thing is you know trying to um, match uh, expenses and revenue from expenses. Yeah. Yeah, and just working with the auditors, I know wherever we land in that parking fund, it's going to require a transfer from the general fund to uh, offset that loss. So we'll deal with that. And the discussion of whether or not personnel remain within the parking meter fund rather than oh, okay. retired budget. Mm -hmm. Retired, yeah. Right, as retirees. Okay. I was certainly hoping in this process that having a full time, although I'd much rather that the officer that's doing the parking meters and the parking fund were in back in full time or, you know, mm -hmm. doing what he's supposed to, what he's trained to do. That's a topic for another discussion, but I was hoping that the re we'd see an increase in the revenues with an increased um, attention to the parking uh, meters and kiosk downtown. So I, I, has that happened yet or no? I mean, we've seen an increase in tickets <coughs> written, yeah, but... Um, which means revenue. Yeah, which means revenue, but revenue. It's, it's slow. Downtown is... Yeah, it's, well, it goes back to the business. Yeah, we need to get the businesses and... Thank you, Mary. Yep. Okay, thanks. Any other questions for Mr. Markowski? Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, before we move on to reports of standing committees, uh, for Brian Boudreaux for the RA nomination, nine yes, zero no, two absent, he is confirmed. Perfect. Congratulations, Brian. All right, uh, Mr. Chairman. First, uh, point of work. Am I allowed to vote or is it too late? You were here. You would like to vote on Brian Boudreaux? <coughs> Kenny still? Yeah. It doesn't. 
It up to you. It doesn't really matter, I think, at the end. Okay, no, no, sorry. It's completely up to you. Nope. Either way, he's going to know what your vote is. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to share. I don't mind, actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, just I thought you, you needed. It's fine. I have no problem with it. I, I will circulate the box if you'd like me to, Alderman Gill, and that's completely okay. up to you. I bet he votes yes. I would, I would imagine. I well, would think that would probably be the vote. <laughs> I saw it out there. I was going to pick it up, but I wasn't quite sure. I had ready for it in case I didn't get back in here. All right. Uh, so we're under reports of standing committees. Up first, we have Alderman Davis, Finance Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The Finance Committee met on February 9th and February 15th. Uh, both topics were the use of the ARPA funds. Present at these meetings were Alderman Dungis, Talbot Gilman, and myself. Also present were Mayor Lair, Treasurer Markowski, Chair Whitcomb, Chief Lovett, Chief Kilcullen, Andrew Strinsty, I'm not sure I said that, but I'm trying, <coughs> Alderman DePoy, Alderman Neary, and Alderman Savage. First discussion was the premium pay for the city employees and the additional premium pay proposed for the police department. After much discussion, the committee tabled the request and the issue will remain in committee for further discussion. The ses second discussion was in regard to the ARPA final rule. Treasurer Markowski informed the committee that the $4.4 million will be added to the general fund as revenue lost due to COVID. The expense will show as a payroll for general government spending as an unrestricted fund balance, which dictated by charter gives the board authority to spend. The final rule decision now makes all proposals acceptable. No application process is needed, and the unrestricted fund balance will be earmarked for projects that will be approved. No action was taken at this meeting, and it is for information only. The committee met again on February 15th. They heard from Andrew Strinsky, Treasurer Markowski, Chief Kulkullen, regarding the needed uh, need for improved IT services and energy efficiencies in City Hall and in the police station. The chief spoke regarding the needs of the police station and how some areas of the building are at 50 degrees and require space heaters for employees to work in those areas. Andrew presented a copy of the work needed to be done in City Hall from a document created by Efficiency Vermont. The committee discussed the need and felt that some work has been completed and we needed to see other energy audits done with accurate costs as the study was approximately two years old. The committee also discussed what funding could be had from these programs before spending ARPA funds. Andrew and Treasurer Markowski will investigate and back, get back to the committee. The next discussion was for the IT services and the IT upgrades. The IT services could be a contractual issue and is, and is it better served at, as a budget item. IT, sir, uh, I'm sorry, Andrew reviewed the costs from Dominion Tech and Tech Group. The cost was in different tiers depending on the city's needs. He felt the cost could be fifty to $60,000 annually and currently the city spends approximately 156000 There are a number of unknowns, so the committee discussed the information and an ad hoc committee um, requested to be appointed by the chair to fully vet what is needed and the cost, what should be budgeted, what savings we'll see, and what ARPA funds would be needed and necessary. So the, the first uh, motion is to approve the request to seek an RFP for managed IT services contract, and I so move. Second. Second. Right, we have a motion that's been seconded. <clears throat> is there any discussion, debate, questions on this? Hearing and seeing none, but all those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. The second motion was to approve a $20,000 request to upgrade the Rutland City website, and I so move. Second. All right, we have a motion, it's been seconded. Any questions, debate? Hearing and seeing none, would all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, motion carries. Uh, lastly, there was a motion to authorize the chair to establish an ad hoc committee to look at the IT needs of the city to calculate costs and savings, and I so move. Second. Second. I right, have a motion that has been seconded. Any discussion, questions, debate? I'd like to volunteer to lead that committee if that's okay, Mr. Chairman. All right, we have one volunteer for that committee. Any other questions, comments? 
hearing and seeing none, would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. And then, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I'd like to suspend the rules at this time to take action on um, the CEDAR request for the hub. Second. All right, we have a motion to suspend the rules. It has been seconded. Would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. So we discussed this in committee, but we were unsure if it was needed, um, and that's why we're suspending the rules. I needed an opportunity to call and speak with Mr. Jepson. So the motion is to suspend the rules to authorize the mayor to sign a letter of support for Cedar's request for HUB for $400,000 in order to obtain grant funding. And I so move. Okay. We have a motion, it's been seconded. Are there any questions, discussion, debate? Uh, I'm just going to abstain because of the conflict of interest I mentioned at the last meeting. Okay. Abstain. Any other questions, comments? Be. And Lyle's here. I'm not sure if Lyle, anyone any, anything would you'd like, like to, to share? Uh, have an opportunity to say anything further. Or? Answer any questions you have. I'd like to say something after, as long as it goes a certain way. <laughs> 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 I'll sit down I'm sure, you'll have words either way. Yeah. All right. No, well, no pressure, it appears. All right. So, if there's no further discussion, questions, or debate, would all those in favor please say aye? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Do you still wish to speak to us? <laughs> <laughs> well, now the pressure's on, and we appreciate that. We appreciate the opportunity to have to go earn this money. And what we need to do to do that is we need to go out and get grants, because our agreement is it's a one for one. If you give us one, we're going to go find another, so we're going to double your money. So the pressure's on. We appreciate that, and we want to thank you for that, that support. We want to get those kiosks working out there and get the money coming in because people are parking on the street and enjoying things downtown and hopefully coming to the hub to enjoy the services there. And I wanted to also introduce you tonight to two new members of our team who are working for you and working for the county. Crispin White has joined us as our membership and events ma manager. Both of these folks I know you will recognize, okay, because they are not new to the community. I'm also excited to have Olivia Lyons joining us. She is our communications and marketing manager, um, and she knows, has probably interviewed all of you in this room. <laughs> so we're excited with our new hires, and we appreciate your support, and I'm sure I'll be back to ask you for more money someday. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Lyle. All right. Uh, and Alderman Davis, that's it? That's it, thank you. Perfect, thank you. That brings us to Alderman Gillum, Charter and Ordinance Committee. Uh, we're removing from the table. Moved from the table for discussion. Second. All right. Motion removed from the table has been seconded. Would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Is removed from the table. Uh, I move that we ex adopt the ordinance. Second. What ordinance for discussion are we here. Second. All right, we have a motion that has been seconded to adopt the shopping cart ordinance as proposed. Um, City Attorney. He might have some more information. Uh, I am certainly able to answer any questions. I know it's a fairly dense um, ordinance, it's six pages here. Um, we did receive uh, just this one email um, from the businesses that we sent sent the letter that I attached um, to. So we got a response from TJ Maxx, um, and, but nothing, unless you all received any correspondence. Um, my office didn't receive anything else other than you got one from Walmart. that particular email. The letter to the businesses, I thought, summarized uh, you know, more or less what the requirements are going to be for the businesses. Um, so that's, if you, if you read that letter, um, that gives you a, a pretty good understanding of what we're going to be asking of the businesses. Um, there's some, um, you know, kind of nuts and bolts within the six page that we could go into further detail on if you'd like. One suggestion I might make is um, the date that we have the, um, kind of the, the plans being due is April 1st, um, given that we're getting closer to that date. Um, it might make sense to move that to May 1st or, or later, just to give the businesses an opportunity to digest the, the ordinance if it passes and be able to prepare those plans that, that would be required by the ordinance. Um, so 
so that's just one thing to think about as an amendment, because April 1st doesn't give them much time um, if it is passed tonight to, to do that. Marilyn? If I could, um, I uh, sent along a correspondence to the board last week uh, that I received from uh, someone up the, uh, the food chain from Walmart, uh, I believe down in the Cape Cod region. Uh, first time I'd actually had talked to anyone um, outside of the immediate uh, managerial uh, people down here about uh, this very issue. Uh, and as you will remember on the uh, email, he did mention a couple of things that they were uh, uh, wanted to work uh, as uh, community partners, which was nice to hear. Uh, they are aware of the issue. Um, they are in the process um, of uh, getting a, another locking mechanism for any new carts that they get. I guess this is all leading to um, what I'm feeling, and, and I want to say I appreciate all the work that's been done on this, and I know that the, the board has t considerable time, as the city attorney has, and we all want this problem to be addressed in some way. I just want it to be in a fair way, as fair as we can. And I guess I'm having some heartburn with the thought of a potential fine for businesses who are having their cart stole, all taken from their property. And I guess that's the part that, that rubs me the wrong way. I get that they need some incentive. I understand that they need to have some you know, skin in the game. Uh, but uh, going this way, I guess it just doesn't feel right. So um, I wanted to make sure I said that tonight, uh, irregardless of you know, where you're going to go with this. Um, it just, I, I felt, I've talked to enough people, it seems like that's some of the sentiment around uh, town is that it just doesn't seem like it's the right thing to do to, to be finding the businesses who are having their carts taken off their property. So I wanted to make sure I, I said that. Thank you, Mayor Lair. Alderman DePoy. So I had sent you all an email in response to um, some of the communications that we were getting from the city attorney a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I'll read it again just so those are here that did not get the email or get a chance to read it, um, understand where I'm coming from, which is very similar to what the mayor just said. My biggest problem with this whole process is that the businesses are not the ones who are taking the carts off property. It is people using those carts to bring their groceries or goods home to where they live. I believe if we're going to hold the businesses responsible for the theft of their carts, then we should also hold the person or persons who have taken the carts off premises accountable as well. I'm going to propose a $250 fine for people caught taking carts off premises. As for abandoned carts, I am fine with the provisions that are proposed for the businesses to have three days to come and pick those carts up. But again, I do not think the businesses are solely responsible being that their carts are being taken off of their property. Those causing the carts to be all over the city need to be held accountable also. Uh, so, um, that said, um, I propose we have a $250 fine. I'm going to propose an amendment. And the amendment would be a $250 fine for people caught taking carts off of the premises of the businesses. Second. I'll second it, but uh, for discussion. Sure. Right. Thank you. Now, again, as I said, the, the, the parts of this that's, that hold the businesses responsible for going out and collecting their carts, you know, because nobody was caught taking them off of their premises, then that's fine. We call them up or they have three days to go get their carts. I've, I, you know, every time we have this process and talk about it here, it's about the 10th time literally since I've been on this board, probably the 20th since you've been on the board. Um, <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm still in my seat. Just write that down. <laughs> <laughs> Make a mark. But, but on it, no, seriously, I, you know, every time we do this, it, not much gets done or the locks get put on the carts. And I've had a cart where I tried, I, I parked in City Hall. It was after a meeting. I ran over to Walmart to get some couple of cases of water, came back, and the, the thing came to a skidding stop at a certain distance. That, that stopped me from taking the cart over to City Hall, which I was going to take back anyways. But, um, so, but what my point is, is that if the businesses are being held responsible for the theft of the carts that they provide to their employees or to their customers, 
at some point, if I'm a business owner like that, I'm going to say, look, I'm not even going to have the cart. So I'm getting fined for them taking my stuff. I just think that's wrong. I think there needs to be, as somebody mentioned, as I think the report mentioned, needs to be some skin in the game for the people that are causing the carts to be all over our city. And, you know, I, I have visualized, I've paid attention to the cart. They are. They're all over the place. I mean, right now, today, I saw probably four or five of them as I was out doing errands and, and uh, doing business stuff. So um, it's definitely a problem. Uh, it's unsightly. And um, I just think it, it's a, it's a double-edged sword where we need to hold all of those accountable, not just those who are having their however much it costs cart stolen from them. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman DePoy. And so I did get a number of you. Alderman Clifford, I have you first. Who would enforce this, Tommy? Um, whoever is in charge of enforcing with the businesses at this point. Um, and so, I, I mean, it's, it's, it would have to be the businesses see somebody wheeling their cart out of their parking lot and they drop a dime, I guess. I, I, and the police would be the ones that have to respond. And I, I have a, a lot of trouble with trying to ask our police department also. Right, because they're shorthand, short Because staff. they're so short staffed, I mean, to go out and, and first of all, we already said we don't want them being mask polices. Okay, great. But secondly, do we want them, you know, going around and pulling the carts back in? Um, I suppose if the chair of charter and ordinance were willing, we could take a look at, um, you know, a, a half of the fine possibly going because if if they got to enforce the the taking of the cart off, they've also got to enforce with the businesses to come pick them up in three days um then you know maybe we set up a, a 50 percent of the fine goes to the police department or something like that to help fund them for officer recruitment or something like that i don't know it's just an idea right off the top of my head to your question so <clears throat> thank you alderman davis so i i don't disagree with alderman deploy or the mayor that um it's not the the stores that are purposely um, losing their carts or having them left in residential areas but it is the store's responsibility to pick up their carts in a residential area and I think that's some of the problem is the response has not been there um, maybe not all stores but some stores when they are notified that there are you know three four seven ten carts sitting on Plain Street for example uh, they're not going to retrieve them so they have to be responsible for that because what's happening then is the city DPW had to pick them up. I think they picked up a hundred and some odd carts one day. Um, that's on taxpayer dollar time when they could be doing something different. So I don't disagree that there's accountability for the folks that can take the cart over whatever the lock time, but the stores have a responsibility to make sure those carts are maintained. So those locking systems are working. Mm -hmm. And I know that Price Chopper is developing a new system. TJ Maxx, you're not gonna get the cart out of the store. That's gonna be kind of difficult for folks to lug things to their cars, but it is what it is, you know, but I don't know how much Walmart has stepped up to the plate to, to recover, um, um, carts when they're there but it's unsightly when you go um, to your your neighborhood and you see these carts all over the corner upside down in snowbanks it's it's unsightly to the neighborhoods as well so I, I, I think I don't know how you hold um, someone accountable who's taking the um, the cart unless you have someone there at the time witnessing that you know little Mary from the Bardwell took the cart I don't know how you do that, but there has to be some responsibility on the stores in the sense of it's their property. I don't care whether you find them, but I think you have, they have to have some, they have to have accountability to pick these up out of the neighborhoods. Thank you, Alderman Davis. Alderman Talbot. Yeah, so I agree that the carts are an issue, right? They're a big issue on my block. I, I regularly pick them up and drive them back to Walmart and it's a real pain to do that. So I've talked to a lot of the people in my neighborhood who bring the carts home and I ask them why and um, they just don't have any other resources, right? They're not, like, we can all take our groceries home in a car, right? Or if our car breaks down, we have, you know, a network of people who can help us and these folks just don't have anywhere to turn. And I've talked to them about like, what would you think if the city finds people? 
they don't have the resources to pay a fine, so they're not really concerned with there being a fine, right? I think the city treasurer can talk about how difficult it is to collect from people who have no resources, right? So I don't think we can reasonably collect this fine. Also, participating in the traffic com uh, committee or the parking committee meetings, um, I learned how much it costs to collect on a parking ticket and how many people are involved. At least three city employees are involved in collecting on a single $15 parking ticket. It doesn't seem like even just the number of hours that they're paid for to process one parking ticket is worth the $15 fee. Um, and I don't think we're proposing to find the skate shop or a local <coughs> corner store, right? We're proposing to find big national chains that have the resources. And I get it that it's not fair to them. They're not the ones taking the carts home. But I, I think of a situation like a college where I teach in a small town. The students sometimes cause problems, right? And they uh, negatively impact the residents of the town. It's not really reasonable for you know, the town to figure out which students are causing the problems. They come to the institution. They come to the college and they ask us, can we address the problem? And then the burden is on us because we're the larger institution with the resources to address the problem that our simple existence, right, doing business is creating. So uh, I don't support um, finding the people taking the carts. I think it's unfortunate that it happens, but I think we need to uh, have a, a different plan. Thank you, Alderman Talbot. Also, I think the thing that changed a lot too was the bus. The bus and where they stopped within the plaza has changed. Yeah. And maybe that's a revisit to kind of get this under control. And they also, um, they prevented folks from taking a certain amount of groceries onto the bus because they felt that it was taking up too much space or a seat or something. So I think that conversation has to occur with the bus. Um, which allows people to get their groceries home um, without having to, to take a cart with them. Thank you, Alderman Davis. Alderman Franco. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think Alderman Talbot mentioned a lot of what I was going to say, but I think you know this doesn't really get to the root of the issue if we are essentially criminalizing poverty. I think we have to think strategically about how human behavior changes, and I don't think finding folks who can't afford to take their groceries home with them uh, is going to bring any solution here. Um, I also think that it's it's really contradictory to our stance on enforceability and uh, over straining the police, uh, which is something that we brought up multiple times around bringing police to uh, grocery stores when we were thinking about a masking ordinance. So I really don't think um, that this would be enforceable. But um, ultimately, I, I, I agree with Alderman Talbot. It's just not the way to go here. Thank you, Alderman Franco. Alderman Dungeons. Sure. Um, so <clears throat> I think I want to speak to the, the point of fairness that a couple of these stores have made in, in light, in, in relation to, you know, who do we find? When we talk about fairness here, we're talking about the responsibility of the stores, although they aren't the ones that are putting the carts out on the street, totally understand, but their responsibility as members of this community to pick up those carts. We've asked them to do that. It's already in the ordinance to pick up those carts. There's already guidelines around it. There's even in the ordinance today, the locking mechanism piece, which they weren't taking care of. So when you parent a kid, you set a rule and then you set a consequence, right? If you do this, then this will happen. That's what we're doing here, right? We're just setting a consequence. If they take care of their responsibility, which is pick up the cart, make sure the locking system works, which TJ Maxx, by the way, does a phenomenal job of. Um, and I understand that they care, they're, they're concerned about the fairness, but I, we you shop there, that car, the second you get past that door locks up, right? So it's not going out in that parking lot. If those stores take that responsibility to fulfill their duty to us as a city by fulfilling their duty to the ordinance that's already out there and the one that we're gonna expand upon tonight, um, then it is fair because they're doing their part. As far as finding people that are taking the carts, yes, there needs to be messaging and potentially a consequence. 250 bucks is super harsh. Like Alderman uh, Talbot said, being able to collect that and, and, and receive that fine is probably extremely difficult and costly to the city. Um, <clears throat> so I don't think that the amendment at this point in time is appropriate. I do think we need to, we need to take the, the ordinance as written, put it in place, and then maybe discuss what we do from there after we say how effective it is. Thank you, Alderman Dungess. Alderman Talbot. And uh, so I just wanted to follow up on what um, Alderwoman Davis said about the bus. I believe that the RPC is um, talking to the bus about conducting a route analysis to look at potentially um, adding stops or relocating stops to be back down in the downtown plaza. 
And then I also have heard that Net Zero VT and Come Alive Outside are starting uh, a walk to shop program in Rutland that'll bring hundreds of personal shopping trolleys, many of which will be highly subsidized and offered to low income and transit dependent residents. Excellent. Thank you, Alderman, Alderman Grusso. Yes, uh, I've been listening to the debate. I've been unable to attend some of the meetings, but um, I'm gonna go back to, to the days of uh, college in Kenmore Square. I was chosen to speak about the bottle bill and what was, was so good about it. And I won the debate by taking everybody over the window to look outside by the Mass Pike and seeing you probably two feet of empty bottles and cans along the railroad tracks. And I said, if that were Vermont, somebody would get compensated for picking those up. I'm wondering if like the partnership or if someone could work with some of the business owners in coming up with an incentive, like I've heard of, there's a, a machine where you, you you put a coin in and take it. Maybe it would it, it would involve kids or people saying, "Hey, I can go get a buck if I bring this machine this this back." You know, doing that kind of a creative thing. Um, it, it's been my feeling about parking since before I ran for office that uh, Saudis a million years ago they opened on Sundays and the owner had a big sign, "All employees park out back," and for three weeks he never served a meal. I said, give me everybody's keys. I put them up front. People saw there were cars there. Success breeds success. I'm wondering if we can be creative like that with the parking, with the shopping carts, and maybe just put a little bit more time into having the RRA or somebody talk to the owners and say, you know, incentivize the, the, the somebody out there to go pick them up, like the empties, like the, um, you know, like they do and, and pick up on the street. You see the guys with their little carts out there. It keeps our streets pretty clean. I'm just wondering before we, we do something, is this the absolute end of this or can we just maybe try one more little thing that would, would have someone else help us do this? Because it, it is sad to penalize our businesses. These, you know, we've been hurting for business in this town for a long time. It's also tough to penalize people who can't afford to be penalized. So I don't know, I guess I'm not in favor of, of passing this until maybe just give it one more shot at, at being self-funding, self, -funding, self whatever the word would be where it would take care of itself and and that's that's kind of what I'm looking at is if if there's a way that maybe the businesses can incentivize people to bring them back and for them and they make a couple of bucks just like empty bottles thank you thank you Alderman Russo Alderman Depoy thank you Mr. President now you know in introducing this amendment in no way shape or form am I trying to hit the you know impoverished of our city with a $250 fine or criminalize people for that matter with a $250 fine because I don't know of any ordinance that's not at least linked to a state law that criminalizes um, any activity in the city of Rutland, no ordinance. Unless it's, as I said, linked to a state law. So this would not criminalize anything. Um, and nor, nor would that be my intent to criminalize that. I'm simply looking for a deterrent, okay? It's a deterrent. Do I expect that we're gonna collect on any of the cases? Possibly not, okay? But at least the deterrent there. And if you don't like 250, then throw a number out there that you say, you know what? That's a deterrent that's strong enough that's gonna deter people from taking 100 carts a day or however many are taken, and then having to have our businesses expend the time, the manpower, to go out and pick the carts up. Because then that costs them money. And then what's that do? That drives up the costs that we all pay in these stores. And TJ Maxx, you're right, they do a great job. Um, they've got 20 shopping carts. I mean, Walmart's got 200, 250 shopping carts. It's, it's a much bigger expense. Can Walmart afford it? I don't know, probably can't. Can TJ Maxx afford it? Obviously they can to you know, keep their carts. But you know, my point here is, is that the carts are going out off the property and at least if they post or if somebody says to the people that are taking the carts, hey, you know, there's a city ordinance of $250 fine if you're caught taking that. They might say, oh, I'm gonna drop that here and pick my bags up and carry my bags home or get on the bus and take the bus home, you know, wherever it is. That's all I'm trying to do is a deterrent so that the businesses aren't saddled with yet another burden to doing business here in the city of Rutland. 
Thank you. Thank you, Alderman DePoy. Alderman Gill. Yes, I, I'm going to talk to the amendment first, and then I'll talk about the legislation after we get done with the amendment. I need to talk to the city attorney. Um, we had a piece in here about we haven't got fines in here yet. Am I correct? Or we're going reverting back to what or, what's in place in ordinance? I'm no, confused. It's, uh, it says that the board will establish the fines. Uh, so we have not done that yet. Right, but there it isn't set up right now to to fine. Uh, the, the folks that take the property off of the um, premise, so that would that would need to be a change. But the actual fines for the businesses hasn't been set. It's set to you know basically be something that the board can vote on periodically and sits with the clerk's office. So we still need some work on the fine part of this. So I would suggest that we take your motion and put it in committee and deal with the fines all at the same time. I'm just asking if that's what he wants to do. I, I, Since we still need to deal with that. Yeah, I mean, as the maker of the motion, I mean, as it was brought up, 250, as they say that, it does seem a little stiff. Maybe 100 bucks is more appropriate and more palatable to people on this board. Uh, or 50 bucks, I don't know. I mean, the thing about it is if you, it, you, know, you get a parking ticket, it doesn't matter if you're low income or high income or middle income, you're still expected to pay that. But we still budget, as Mary said, for a loss in the parking meter fund. I mean, that's what we budget for because we know we're not going to get all of the revenue for the fines in that. So, I mean, if you want to take that back into committee, I'm fine with it. Seconder is probably fine with it and fine. work on a fine. And if, if people agree to it, I don't. I just put 250 out there to to debate, and I'm I'm fine with adjusting that. You have something, Attorney Bomer, to add to that? Yeah. So it is a little bit different because, again, you could you could pass this as is tonight and then deal with setting the fines sometime basically before April 1st or May 1st, whenever this is going to go into effect. Uh, for for the businesses who leave the, the carts for more than three days, more than three times during the, the calendar year, if you wanted to do something where you're fining um, the folks that are taking the carts off premise, then that would require an amendment to the actual language in the, the charter. So, All right, you know, so. you could pass it tonight even without the fines for the businesses, and again, come back and vote on that at some point Not complete. prior to yeah, whenever this goes into effect. Um, so that that is an option to do to do that. Just to clarify, Alderman Tabar, are you comfortable? withdrawing the motion. so so not entirely but withdrawing the 250 dollar amount and sure. just saying you know i'd like to have an amendment where there is a fine that's you know that's agreed to or talked about in the committee so if i just withdraw the 250 dollar amount of, of my amendment i'm fine with that as long as the committee go, takes it and talks about it and you know they can decide on a number or no no fine at all but at least, at least they're talking. So, uh, just turning Bloomer for clarification, would it be to ensure that we talk about it? Would it be easiest for this to be withdrawn? We would discuss this, take the vote, and then following it, refer that issue to committee. Um, you, I mean, I'd love to have the language for it, but we probably could get away with just having the, having a motion to amend to add a fine um, or yeah, however we want to phrase it. And it's simple enough, I guess, that I could, I could add that in if it passed. And then you could treat that fine the same way that you're treating the other fines where you're gonna get together and create a schedule of fines at a later date. Um, you know, but you, need, you would need to add it tonight. Okay. I mean, I don't think it makes sense to pass this and then have Henry Yep. advertise that this right, is the ordinance, right, right, right. ordinance and then come back and have another meeting where you change the ordinance <coughs> to add you know you'd want to add it tonight or table it um, if I could just put in my two cents um, you know I think it is difficult because if it's in there purely for show um, you know I guess if that's everybody's understanding that that would be fine but if if you're putting it in and you're expecting either the code compliance officer or the police to actually act on it. And I think that, again, in talking about the parking tickets, those have some hope of being paid by the people that can afford it. I'm assuming 90% of these folks that are taking the carts can't afford whatever we set it at. Um, and 
if it entails the code compliance officer to write the ticket, potentially my office to deal in some way with it, um, to go before the Judicial Bureau to get a judgment or a default judgment. It's quite a bit of city employee time to probably, even if you get the judgment, you probably not going to be able to collect the, the $15. You're getting an assistant, so you can have plenty of time now. <laughs> <laughs> you can have plenty of time, pal. I mean, unless we're giving them a baseball bat to go to these people's houses, I don't know that, you know, getting blood from a stone isn't going to matter if we have 10 attorneys. Um, but it would, you know, it'd be something that they, they would be spending their time on. So, you know, again, I, I understand the sentiment, and if I hate to drag things on here, but I went to look for the mayor's email, and I found that um, the Vermont Retail and Grocers Association did send an email at 6:35 um, this evening. So I can read that into the record. It supports what you know the folks that are saying that the businesses should shouldn't have the entire onus on them. But just so it's just to be fair, since they did send it, it says, "Dear Rutland City of Alderman." On behalf of Rutland's retailers, I thank you for this, your service and commitment to your community. As you know, retailers' focus since the industry's inception has been squarely on providing outstanding service to their customers. The proposed city ordinance relating to shopping carts imposes fines on businesses for the actions of persons outside of the business, but fails to impose fines on those persons responsible for the theft. The act of removing shopping carts from the property of a business is a crime. This proposal essentially seeks to punish a business for actions that are out of their control and therefore creates an untenable relationship between the business and community. As I'm sure the Board of Alderman may be aware, shopping cart theft has long been an issue for retailers across the country. Most recently, according to the Food Marketing Institute in Washington, D.C., annual costs due to cart theft is around $800 million nationally. Retailers have deployed various theft prevention methods to ensure retrieval of their carts without imposed ordinances. Retailers continue to try new methods to ensure their property is not stolen. However, without incentives or deterrents such as fines, for persons to discontinue theft of shopping carts, Rutland City's frustration with stolen shopping carts will not disappear. I strongly urge the Board of Aldermen to consider how to provide support to the persons as described in the January 26th Rutland Herald article, quote, who may lack transportation and need to get their groceries home, unquote, as well as how to det deter those that leave the premise with stolen property prior to punishing businesses for a crime committed against them. Thank you, Aaron Segrist, Vermont Retail and Groceries Association President. So, sorry to kind of put you on that little tangent, but um, while I had the floor, I figured I would, I would read that in. Um, I mean, if I could say one other thing, I'm, I'm not wearing my alderman hat anymore, but I, I get pulled into policy sometimes still. Um, I mean, we have an ordinance now that I think the way it reads, it was very pro-business and it was very, um, it did put the onus on the folks that are t were taking the carts and it provided a method where the businesses wouldn't be penalized at all if they came and picked things up or if they had anti-theft devices installed. Um, and it obviously has not, has not worked. Um, and I drive home Wales Church Williams Grove every, every night and past Alderman Talbot's house. And there's been carts, Walmart carts and other carts that I can't identify for at least over two weeks. And most of these businesses are, are claiming that they that they have people going around. And those are in, you know, they're not far outside of downtown. They're, they're in, you know, they're in notable places that if they did have someone that they've hired, if they were taking it seriously, those would be picked up within a two week period. So I think this has struck a decent balance between if, you know, those cards, if, they, if they're found there, the businesses aren't going to get fined immediately. Basically going to be the, the code, op, code compliance officer saying, there's a cart, you know, there's three carts in front of the Longfellow building on Church Street. And then they'll go back in, you know, they probably won't go back in three days. They'll probably go back in five days or seven days. And if they're still there, um, they'll, those will be the first three that Walmart gets for free. And then after that, they would start getting fined whatever the board sets to define that. And I don't, while I understand the, the kind of philosophical, um, feeling that you don't want to put the onus on the businesses. That doesn't seem unreasonable, given that it's a problem that we haven't found a solution to. And I don't think the solution is going to be finding the people who, who take the, the property off of the premises, because that's in the current ordinance. For whatever reason, it's, it's, not, it's not that, well, it hasn't been enforced and it and doesn't seem to have been um, effective. So 
that, that's my two cents again. A little less on the legal side and somewhat on the policy side and helping to try to craft an ordinance that may have a little bit <coughs> better luck in solving the issue. Thank you, Attorney Bloomer. And I have seen a number of hands. Just going back to you, Alderman Depoy. So I was just going to change the motion, if I may. Yes. Um, to you need to withdraw the other one. Uh, I'd like to withdraw the original and propose a f just a generic fine to be determined by the committee um, as they go forward of this um, for people that are caught taking cards, and that would that would be the motion. Just. Um, I'm sorry, Henry. It would, uh, the motion would be to um, develop a fine by the committee at the committee's discretion for people caught taking cards off premises. That would be it. Anybody? Uh, the original. Are you okay with yeah, that? Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay, thank you. I, I might, if I could make a suggestion, maybe the amendment should be to amend the to amend the ordinance as written to include. Um, a fine for those removing the carts from the premises uh, to be drafted by the city attorney um, and fine to be determined at a at a later date by the board because that would at least give me the instruction to add it to the ordinance we could um, advertise it you know as of tomorrow and English major <laughs> and then you can decide what you want the fine to be afterwards we'll accept that that so, was so. yeah so moved. All right, so the maker of the motion and the seconder is okay with that. Um, so that is now the amendment that is on the floor being debated. I'm um, just going to run through my list real quick. Alderman Franco? Yeah, I mean, um, I just wanted to say that I, I still stand by, um, you know, my sentiment expressed earlier. Um, I do want to clarify it, and I misspoke. I didn't mean to say that this was criminalizing, but I do think it is in, a, in alignment with the historical criminalization of poverty that is taking place in this country. So I will say that I still stand with any amount should not be fined for someone who is who's caught taking it. But um, what I will say is that um, my other comment is kind of a little off topic from where we have been on here. But um, I'm just thinking about logistically how this carries out with shop shopping carts that are all across the city and depending on a, enforce, a, a compliance officer going around and figuring out where they are or just them being reported and us being, being inundated with phone calls. I mean, I think that that's kind of asking us to be um, overloaded. So I would, I mean, I'm also seeing some crossover with potential investments in IT. You know, I could see the case where we think more about it from a strategic user standpoint and thinking about how uh, a lot of residents in our community are already telling each of you individually. Um, I could imagine a scenario where we have an app or we have some sort of other IT infrastructure so that they could report it and it could be easily uh, centralized on a list and given to the uh, retail managers um, on a frequent basis, I guess, within the three-day period. But um, I guess what I'm saying is that I don't know that there's enough clarity as it's written in terms of how this plays out logistically. And I think that we're just kind of asking ourselves to be overloaded <laughs> because there are a lot of shopping carts out there and it happens so frequently. Um, so I guess I don't, I wasn't in the meeting with the, 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 where this was discussed, but I guess any clarity there would be helpful. Thank you, Alderman Franco, Alderman Talbot. Yeah, so I understand the idea that it's wrong to take a shopping cart, right? But I, I again, for me, it's an issue of compassion, right? Like the average person who's getting an SSI payment is making $500 a month. Um, Price Chopper earns $3.5 billion in revenue a year. TJ Maxx earns over $40 billion in revenue a year. And Walmart earns over $500 billion of revenue a year. They can afford fines. And if they don't want to pay fines, they'll come up with a mechanism to prevent people from taking cards. I thought Alderman Grusso's idea is a good one. If they want to avoid paying fines, they'll come up with a way to incentivize people to return the cards. But this is a mechanism that then pushes the business owners to come up with that so that they're not having to deal with lost cards. So I would oppose any fine for someone taking a card. Thank you, Alderman Tellett. Alderman Clifford. No, I just gonna make a suggestion before the motion was made to leave it in committee because it seems like <laughs> we're not ready to, right. to do anything on this right now. So I was just gonna say, let's leave it alone. Um, but, to, but to Alderman Talbot's uh, and Alderman uh, Franco's comment about the, uh, you know, the people that obviously 
can't afford to do this thing. Uh, I, I agree uh, to that point, but I also think, you know, if a law is being broken, then, you know, a law is being broken. So something has to be figured out on that end. So I just, you know, whatever the board wants to do, I just think, I don't think we're ready to do anything with this tonight. That's just my take on it. The Alderman, <coughs> so. uh, uh, Alderman Clifford's right. I, I, I think that's what I was trying to say. I just don't think it's there yet. And it's just, no one likes to see shopping carts around the streets uh, and no one likes to find businesses. I wouldn't think of any municipality would like that. So that's both ends of the spectrum here. We gotta find a happy way to, to, to work this out. I don't think we're ready to put it in and I think it's really crazy to put in an ordinance that doesn't have an amount, an amount to be determined later or whatever. I think that's kinda, you know, either you put it in in its com, you know, complete form or you don't do it at all. So. I'm really inclined to just say that we're not ready for this yet. Thank you, Governor. So I'll we'll move the table. Yeah, second. All right. We have a motion to table. It has been seconded. Uh, that is non debatable. So, would all those in favor of tabling this issue please say aye. 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 Those opposed? No. One no. Motion carries. Table. It has been tabled. Matt's got his hand so up. You want to, yeah, you want to refer I, this I, back? The horse might be out of the barn, though. I don't, I mean, do you want to come back to a full board and have this discussion again, or would you rather have it go back to committee? It's still in committee. I think you need to refer it back to committee. Right. But it's still in committee. I mean, a, but a recommendation did come out, and we never voted on it, so. Right. Um, so it's still there. No, I, it doesn't really matter, because if everybody doesn't mind. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, even though I'm a parliamentarian, I'm not, I, I don't know. I guess if everybody's on the same page, vocabulary um, but I would I just just throwing out there I'm not sure it would be that constructive to come back next meeting and have another hour conversation in here um, and I, but I don't know if it was clear to well, I guess well so I'll, I'll, with, yeah, let's I'll just withdraw my motion to table and do a motion to refer back to charter okay. there you go thank you second all right no, we don't need a motion to reconsider anything there. This is fine. Well, I mean, technically, I think you do have to reconsider. <laughs> okay. So I, I was in the prevailing side motion to reconsider. Second. 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 Thank you. All right. So we have a motion to reconsider. It's been seconded. The purpose of this would be to bring it back to then, I believe, refer back to committee, just so people know what we're doing. All right. So would all those in favor of reconsidering this question, please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Motion to re remove from the table. Oh, have so to that, do that, that was wiped out. Never mind. Done. No, so it's motion refer. to recommit. To refer. Re refer. Refer back, back to. to. Refer back to, recommit, whatever the proper verbiage is on that. <laughs> refer, <laughs> recommit, I think it would be second. Second. Charter and ordinance. I'll second. We, we have a motion that's been seconded to. Recommit slash re refer this back to Charter Owners Committee. Sir, mm -hmm. any discussion, debate, <coughs> questions? Mayor Allaire. Yes, so um, I know this went around and around, and I'm glad you're ending up where you are. And I agree with you, uh, Sam, that this uh, is not ready for prime time. I would suggest strongly that you um, re invite the folks from Walmart and Price Chopper because I think you might get a slightly different different response from the folks at, at particular Walmart. And the bus. Uh, and the bus. And the bus. And get all the players into the room and try to come up with something that's going to be reasonable for all for everybody involved. I have, I mm -hmm. like the same yeah. you do uh, all the time because I live three doors down from you. And I, you know, I went, I've been around the last couple of days. They're all over the place. It's a mess. It really is. So, you know, it's something that needs to be addressed. But it's been 20 years and we haven't fixed the problem yet. Right. So um, I think you get another crack at it now. I think you're close, but I think you gotta be fair and equitable with everybody. It, whether they make $75 billion a year or they make $5 a year, we gotta be fair to everybody. Alderman Dungeons? Yeah, I absolutely agree with the mayor. People, when they're invited to these meetings, should show up. Right. Uh, Alderman Gillum sent out invitations. It was posted in the paper, and, and you're right, they should. They absolutely should show up. So uh, whether it's the committee meeting itself or a public forum on this, um, if you have an opinion, come to the committee meeting so that we don't have to bring these things back and forth and back and forth. Thank you. 
Alderman Franco? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really important, as the mayor said, to have all of the actors at the table. And I think one critical perspective that is largely missing are the folks who are taking the carts. I mean, I, that they are central to this policy. And so I wonder if there are any organizations who have close uh, ties to folks who depend on their services that might be able to be part of the conversation and shed some insight there. Thank Just you. Just as a thought. <clears throat> And those are the organizations that pushed me to get this ordinance out. The people in the neighborhoods are fed up. Right. We're in the tail of two cities. We got business people who want to make some money, and then we have behavior issues in the neighborhood because they don't have any pride. We need to figure out how to get the pride back so they do it on their own. Right. That and, is and the I don't, issue. And I don't mean like neighborhood committees. I mean more like, you know, Brock or other uh, serving institutions that provide that sort of, or like even the food bank, right? Like thinking about where these people go and might have those relationships. Very good. All right, so we have a motion that has been seconded to recommit or re refer this to the Charter Owners Committee. Would all those in favor please say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Those opposed? No. No, nope. motion carries. I thought we did a good job. At least you're convinced. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I respect that. All right. Uh, so up next we have Alderman Clifford, Public Works Committee. Really? All right. I'm more than happy to deliver my last public works committee report. <laughs> I don't yeah. like it, but it's okay. So, plus someone refers it back to committee. <laughs> <laughs> That's a possibility. You another meeting. Yeah, show up for one more. Meeting. One more. Okay. So the DPW um, committee met on uh, February eighth at 5.30 p.m. to discuss the, is it also a public meeting, to discuss the long-term control plan. And I believe you all received this, uh, the packet of the long-term long -term control plan. Um, I know the committee members did and the people that were here at the meeting that night, but I think it was all emailed to everyone as well. So the committee members uh, present uh, at the time were myself, Alderman Gillum, Alderman uh, Neary. Others present were uh, Alderwoman Davis, Alderman Talbot, Board President Whitcomb, Commissioner Rotundo, uh, Assistant City Engineer Ted Gillen, uh, City Treasurer Markowski, and Chrissy Torrey. Um, I opened the meeting at 5.30 and introduced Commissioner Rotundo. Uh, the Commissioner reviewed the DPW's proposed long-term control five, uh, plan five-year project implementation schedule highlighting, uh, number one, the strategy used to select projects and develop the schedule. The primary focus for the first couple of years, which is to design several projects in order to make them shovel ready, which will put the city in a position to take advantage of forthcoming state and federal CSO grant and funding programs. Um, I asked how do uh, funding agencies determine uh, what the city would get for funding. And uh, the commissioner said that the Clean Water State Revolving Fund has a statewide project priority list which ranks each project through a point system based on project type and effectiveness. The commissioner continued to discuss the proposed construction projects for the next five years, the addition alternative construction projects that the city may choose to consider adequate state federal CSO funding becomes available. Uh, Alderman Neary asked, uh, how come the proposed construction projects are not on the highest ranked in uh, gallons removed? The commissioner said that you'll notice that gallons removed was not identified for the CSO check valves project. However, we know that the considerable amount of, of, creek, of creek water backs up into the combined sewer system and is treated at the plant. Completing this project will have a major impact, however, precisely how many gallons will be removed is very difficult to determine. Alderman Davis asked how much of the design cost will the city have to pay for? The commissioner stated that we're hoping that most, if not all of the design cost, will be paid for through a loan forgiveness program. The commissioner also discussed the consultants a uh, drastic increase in the estimated project cost that occurred since the 90% draft. He discussed that DPW is comfortable with the cost related to, two, to the two construction projects that were selected, particularly the sewer separation project, 
which was previously designed and priced by engineering company Dubois and King. There was some discussion uh, on the lack of confidence in many other prices, in many, yeah, in many other prices. Alder um had a question of where were there any other factors taken into consideration in addition to the gallons removed? The commissioner said yes, for example, the pavement condition on Vernon Street is poor. DPW would like to resurface the road, but it would be in the city's best interest to install the, uh, to install the below grade piping before we do so. Plus the project is designed and only needs uh, some updates to meet the funding agency's requirements. The commissioner also discussed the DEC's favorable, favorable opinion on the five-year project schedule and the funding opportunities currently available for the design and what is expected in the future for construction grants and subsidies. He highlighted that there is infrastructure funding forthcoming, but this money is not free. The city will need to pay a percentage of the cost using these programs, unlike the current ARPA funds. Alder Maniri asked, can the city use bond money to pay for these grant shares? <coughs> the commissioner stated yes. Alderman Talbot noted that at least one of the projects might meet the requirements for the TIF district funding guidelines. Commissioner Rotundo reviewed the tentative schedule for the com completion of the long-term control plan. There was some discussion with Treasurer Markowski regarding funding uh, these projects and how much debt there is currently uh, in the sewer fund. The commissioner highlighted the state agencies are, um, are actively assisting the city of Rutland to complete, or to complete some of the infrastructure projects that are particularly unique to the city. There was some discussion about additional infrastructure projects that DEC is going to require the city to complete. <clears throat> Alderman Neary asked, will the DPW be flexible when the intended use plan, or IUP, is released and match, match projects with the funding that has been proposed? The commissioner said yes, depending on the, uh, what the IU, IUP states. We may re-strategize on how we approach the additional projects. The commissioner noted that the city could use CSO funding for much needed infrastructure replacement projects that will reduce CEOs, or CSOs. The condition of the Otter Creek Interceptor is of a particular concern to the DPW. The Interceptor is a 1962, 24-inch diameter asbestos cement pipe, 2,500 feet in length and conveys a significant amount of combined sewage <coughs> to the River Street pump station. The pipe is up to, up to 15 to 20 feet below grade. Replacing this pipe will be expensive. But if the pipe fails and the city is forced to replace it under emergency conditions, it would be much more costly. With that, Alderman Neary uh, made a motion to endorse a resolution of support for the DPW Committee's proposed long-term control plan five-year project implementation schedule. And that motion was an, an unanimously approved. And I so move and also uh, circulate uh, that for signatures. I believe the... Uh, City clerk has that. Second. Right, we have a motion has been seconded. Is there any discussion, questions, debate? Hearing and seeing none, would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Uh, Alderman Neary made a motion to grant the DPW Commissioner authorization to issue requests for proposals for engineering design services for all of the projects outlined in the DPW Committee's proposed. LTCP five-year project implementation schedule. That was also unanimously approved, and I so move. Second. second. We have a motion. It's been oh, seconded. Quick there. Is there any discussion, questions, debate? Hearing and seeing none, would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion Alderman carries. Neary also made a motion to grant the DPW. Wait a minute. Nope. I already did that, didn't I? No, no. no. Oh, the DPW no, Commissioner uh, authorization to issue a request for proposals or request for qualification for engineering design services for the Meadow Street sewer separation project previously approved by the voters as part of the 2019 $7.4 million <coughs> wastewater bond. This motion was unanimously approved and I so move. Second. Right, we have a motion, it's been seconded. Any discussion, questions, debate? 
Hearing and seeing none, would all those in favor please say aye. Aye. Those opposed, motion carries. Uh, then Alderman Gillum uh, asked uh, how much did this LTCP cost? The commissioner <coughs> responded it cost $336,000. The hydraulic and hydraulic the hydraulic and hydrologic model, which preceded which precede the LTCP, cost $140,000. There was some discussion regarding the consultant's performance development, uh, developing the H and H model and long-term control plan. The commissioner stated that the Massachusetts office performed well during the development of the H and H model, and that this model will serve the city well in the future. <coughs> However, he also pointed out that there were a lot of uh, shortcomings regarding the consultant's management of the long-term control plan. And uh, that has left the DPW staff unsatisfied and disappointed with their performance. Alderman Gillum made a motion to adjourn and that was done. And we adjourned at 6.27 p.m. And that's all I have. Thank you, Alderman Clifford. <laughs> it wasn't easy. <laughs> Alderman DePoy. Alderman Clifford, I know this is probably after the fact, but I just realized who it is that's probably going to be sitting over here. And I don't want to get ahead of the election, but Dustin Pedroia is in the house again tonight. And I might be sitting next to a Red Sox table for sure. <laughs> we will note that in the minutes. <laughs> possible, <laughs> possible anyway. <laughs> All right, uh, so we're on to reports to select committees. Alderman Neary, Parking Committee. Was anyone planning to read this on behalf of Alderman I, I am. Oh, very good. Alderman Dungeons. All right, give me two seconds to pull it up. Okay. <clears throat> um, members present uh, for the Rutland City Parking Committee on February 16th was uh, Chair Alderman Neary, Alderman Dungeons, Commissioner Rotundo, Chief Kilcullen. Uh, members absent at the time were Alderman Gillum. Uh, sorry. I have an excuse. <laughs> That's fine. Um, others present were Officer Rosario and Alderman Talbot. Uh, Chair Neary called the meeting to order at 5.33 p.m. The committee resumed work on the on-street parking in downtown. Commissioner Rotundo provided a downtown parking map illustrating parking meters locations by type. The parking map data was created using GIS and orthophoto. Uh, and field verified by DPW staff and a reported total of 382 meter stalls and 134 non metered stalls. Um, of the 382 metered stalls, 64 were served by nine kiosks and 50 were considered off street. And the other 134 non metered stalls, 10 were served, uh, 10 served ADA vehicles. Chief Kilcullen. And Officer Rosario conducted field inventory of all meters in the downtown and reported a total of 279 meter heads, leaving 39 parking stalls without meter heads or kiosks. The committee reviewed the map discussing the priority of metered parking by street. The group discussed potentially removing meter parking from Court Street, about 45 stalls, due to low use, generating only about $15 every two weeks. The committee discussed all locations with an emphasis on Merchant Center, Wales, and Strong's Avenue. The committee also discussed the need to replace aging or missing meter heads in functionally obsolete kiosks, leading to a discussion about replacement of parking technologies and services. Flowbird, the current kiosk manufacturer, was discussed along with the 2020 quote for updating the current units and adding additional units. The committee also discussed the Park Mobile app that does not require any meter technology with contactless parking. The pros and cons of each service was discussed and the committee decided to invite some manufacturers to the next meeting to learn more. The committee will hold a hybrid meeting on March 24th at 5.30 p.m. at the Rutland Police Department Community Room. The link uh, will follow and no public was present. The meeting adjourned at 6.27 p.m. Thank you very much. Any questions for Alderman Dungeons? Can I make a comment? Absolutely. Just to some of the earlier discussions. So, we did, it wasn't a, a high priority in the meeting, but we did talk about the parking fund as a whole, the challenges um, of that. And there are a couple pieces to the puzzle, right? The first one is how do we reduce the cost into the parking fund, pull the you know, cost savings lever. Um, the chief was pretty adamant about potentially moving um, the overhead of the, uh, the insurance, the long-term insurance costs out of that fund, uh, whether it be to HR or to a different area. 
um, to make that appear. I mean, it's all coming out of the city budget in the end, but it's not necessarily appropriate to be in the parking fund. So he did talk about that, um, and we are going to discuss that in the future. The other, <clears throat> the other piece is right now our parking rates are probably the lowest in Vermont, right? We don't charge a lot for the time that you have to park. Um, they have been raised in a significant, uh, significant amount of time. And there's some, there's some real advantages to doing a, a little bit of research and seeing what the right rates are for downtown, especially with new stores opening, opening up. I do understand that they're fledgling stores. It was a great point earlier that we don't know what that's gonna look like, but while we're figuring that out, uh, we might have to look at potentially raising some of the parking rates, which it would be appropriate at this point in time. So a lot of discussion around pricing money, ticket fees, all that stuff. Um, but we're going to go deeper into that the next meeting. So if you want to hear more about it, join us on the 24th at 5.30. Very good. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? If not, we're on to reports of representatives, of which we have none. Petitions, letters, miscellaneous communication, we have nothing. Board of Control Commissioners, we have nothing. Is there any unfinished business to go before the board? Seeing none, we are on to miscellaneous motions, resolutions, and new business. But first, we have Robert's rules and the disposition of the Raider Charter Amendment to be removed from the table. So, a motion to remove from the table. Second. A motion to remove from the table. It has been seconded. Would all those in favor please say aye? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. And I'd like to make a motion to um, pass the information that I handed out, I think it's about five weeks ago now or so. Um, if you need me to reread it, I can find it in my emails. I just didn't bring the sheets of paper that I had the last time. So it's entirely up to you, Mr. Chair, I guess. Would you like me to reread it? Um, I, I think if you could, just so we know. Certainly. Give me just a second so that I can pull it up. So why Alderman DePoy is doing that, I just want to remind because it appears in the minutes that parking is going to meet at 530 at the police station and finance is meeting 530 here. I so. think I think that we discussed, I don't know what the conflict is. We tried to solve that. We might have moved one of the two. I don't remember which one it was. Because of uh, no, it's March not 20th. being available on Wednesday. But finance is meeting this Thursday and parking's meeting next month. Next month. March. Oh, next March. Month. March. 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 Oh, March. I'm yeah. sorry. I just Thank you. I just assumed it was the 24th. No, we got okay. the same numbers next month. Got it. Thank anyways. you. So we're good. We're good. <laughs> really? <laughs> you sure? You don't want to come just He's for the fun of it? Stuff. <laughs> All right. Alderman Depoy, if you'll read the language. So the language would read, if approved here tonight, uh, this would... Uh, of course, go to the voters of the city of Rutland on the ballot, which would, I, I guess I would say probably the November uh, general election ballot is what the motion would include. Um, and it would read as such, shall the voters amend the city of Rutland charter to one, add the following as subchapter 37, school moniker nickname 9-37.1, um, name and then it would strike there would be some strike through material deleted uh, and then the underlined material added rutland city schools shall use raiders as the only moniker nickname for its athletic teams and to renumber the subsequent subchapters accordingly <coughs> so would you like me to read it again quickly do people feel as though they have that they want to hear it again no. I, I think we have it. We may need it for the record okay. for Henry, but All right, so we have that it's motion. A, it, it's essentially shall the voters approve the, the name Raiders as the nickname at Rutland High School. All right. We're, we're voting on, we're placing, voting on, on placing on the ballot. ballot. Placing, placing it on, on the ballot, ballot. Right. for the November for the, election. For the people. Is there a second? Is there a second? The, yeah. Second, second now. Second it. Sam, I Sam, yes. Yeah. All right, so we have that motion. It's been seconded. Uh, we are now open for discussion, debate, questions. I'll start it out. So, I mean, I, I don't want to take a lot of time here. We've all been through this. We've already done this. But, um, I, again, I'm just asking uh, the board to approve this going to the voters for the voters to actually be able to weigh in on this once and for all. Um, 
and that's <coughs> it. It's, this goes to the voters. This doesn't necessarily mean you approve of it or you disapprove of it. It's just shall the voters vote on it. Thank you, Alderman Foy. Uh, Attorney Bloomer, just so people are aware, this vote would require two thirds of the voting body present, which tonight would mean you would need six in favor, because we're absent one member. Okay, very good. If there's no further discussion, debate, or questions, would all those in favor? Roll call, please. All right, Clerk Heck, would you initiate a roll call? This roll call vote, is it to put it on the ballot? Yes, so to vote yes would be to Ooh. place uh, Alderman DePoy's proposal on the November ballot. To vote no would be to not place it on the ballot. All set? All set. <clears throat> Alderman DeRusso? Yes. Alderman Franco? No. No. Alderman Calvin? No. Dungeon? No. Alderman Gillen? Yes. Alderman Clifford? Yes. Alderman DePoy? Yes. Alderman Davis? Yes. So vote is five to four, five in favor, four against, but the lack of achieving six votes for the two-thirds majority, so motion fails. Thank you. This moves us on to the pupil waiting resolution. Have people seen a copy of this resolution? Is it a budget? I'm sorry. Uh, so we are into the pupil waiting resolution. I just was asking if people have seen a copy of this. Yep. It's in our packet. Very good. I'll move to circulate for signature. Very good. Second. All right, we have a motion to circulate for signature. It has been seconded. Any questions, discussion, debate? <coughs> Hearing and seeing none. Would all those in favor please say aye? Aye. Those opposed? Motion carries. Just a question, if I yes. may. Do we know if the school board's doing the same? I'm not sure what their strategy is. I think Ted, uh, <coughs> I think he's definitely been involved in um, uh, <coughs> relaying the, the school district's uh, feelings that the, the report is the way that the legislature should be going. But I'm not sure what form that's taking. Right. I know that they're in favor. Um, I'm assuming they're either directing him to do something or sending something some way. Thank you. Very good. All right, and this leads us to Attorney Bloomer's request for two executive <coughs> sessions. Jim. Oh, I'll I just have one, one more. That I just wanted to, um, I don't know if you've all uh, known this information, but uh, our chief wastewater plant, uh, chief operator, Bob Portovansky at the wastewater plant received a uh, operator of the year award from the Green Mountain Water Environmental Association. It's a, it's a high honor that's done every year, and I just want to say congratulations to him. Uh, I know we've had a lot, a lot of stuff to do to keep stuff together over there. So <laughs> I just wanted to make it uh, uh, to say congratulations to him and recognize him. Amen. Thank, Thank you, you Alderman Clifford. And uh, <laughs> I'd also like to take the time to con to uh, wish everyone uh, that's running for re-election in the upcoming election good luck. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Clifford. Thank you, Paul. And enjoy your retirement. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. If, if there's no other miscellaneous motions. I'll move to it? adjourn. Oh, no, rats. No, we can't. Oh, oh, rats. No, we can't. All you had to do was second it, and we were out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Attorney Bloomer. Yeah, uh, we'll be fairly quick. These will uh, be quick. I know. I forgot all about you, Matt. My apologies. Uh, so motion to find premature general public knowledge regarding the negotiation of a labor Here's your last document. Clearly place the city at a substantial disadvantage because no, because the discussion will divulge the board's position on the video. for business to be negotiated. <laughs> Take a picture. So moved. Second. 
We have a motion, it's been seconded. Would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. Attorney motion Bloomer. Motion to executive session with the inclusion of the mayor, commissioner of public works, treasurer, clerk, and city attorney to discuss the labor relations agreement as allowed under Title I, Section 313A1B. So no move. Second. We have a motion, it's been seconded. Would all those in favor please say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. All right, we'll stand down, clear the chamber, and head into executive session.